Emily Brandenburg. And I'm Kristen Lagana. Welcome to Anne Arundel County Week in Review. In this episode, we'll talk to a state delegate about the General Assembly session and we'll stop by the Severn River Lions Club. But first, making headlines this week. The Maryland General Assembly has completed another legislative session and 2017 will usher in big changes for our school system. After years of wrangling and compromise bills, the legislature finally approved a fully elected school board for the 2018 elections. This board is currently appointed by the governor after recommendations from a local commission. The process has always been very contentious and marred by confusion. Last year, the law ended up in court because Democrats changed the makeup of the nominating committee and tried to negate seating of three new Republicans on the board. Here's how the new system works. The Board of Education will have eight members, including seven elected by council district and one student member. Members from districts one, four, five, and seven will run for six year terms in 2018, and then districts two, three, and six will get new members for four year terms in 2020. The elections will be nonpartisan. Got all that, Emily. Hey, girl power, back on the show. Yes, so excited to be here. Yes, Thanks. so excited that you're back. How Thanks about for this me. school bill board, school board bill? It's been a long time coming. It's really exciting. Yeah, it is. I think it's a, a lot more fair. Um, we have a lot of diverse issues depending upon districts, and so we need representation from right. all of them. Our, our delegates are elected, our council is elected, our county executive is elected, and now Anne Arundel County was the last holdout yes. for some form of election and uh, for our school board. So. And I like that the terms, your terms are not all the same, so that you're not um, having everyone re-elected at the same time. That would prove well, very difficult. Well, in um, 2024, that's, that is. What, that's how it switches over. Oh, yeah, that's so that's why you have the six so year and okay. then the four year, yeah. and yeah. then in 2024. But, you know, we were talking about it, like in the council, it's the same way. And in general, you always have some sort of holdover. It's not good. like they all go all at once. Okay. So yeah. that's very we'll good see. <laughs> very exciting. Yes. yes. Well, how are you? I'm good. good. I'm very, very good. Spring has finally shown its head. So yeah. we are now into the midst of some uh, warmer weather. Yes. Um, I always like Easter time. It's kind of a fresh and new. I'm, I'm kind of in the mood to to be uh, purging stuff out of the house. So how about you? Good, I'm really good. Love the warm weather and yes. ready for these allergies to go away, but. I know, know. the allergies, oh, drive me nuts. And the warm weather, can we have a little 70s before we skip into the 60s? It, it was just really warm yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good golly, yeah. So I'm ready for it to just cut back a little bit. Let's do that springtime weather, perfect. We'll get there. Yeah. <laughs> Brooklyn Park bestowed a really nice honor upon a guy who would do anything for his community. The ball fields at 10th Avenue were dedicated to George Mills, a man who spent many decades involved in youth athletics, community events, and local churches, while also working behind the scenes at WJZ Sports. His son Keith is a popular sportscaster at Channel 11. Now baseball is a, a great American tradition because it teaches kids enduring values like sportsmanship, integrity, honesty, determination, hard work, all the things that will lead to a great, productive adult. And it is fitting that today we recognize a resident, a past resident of this community who personifies each and every one of those values and did so every day of his life. For more than four decades, George Mills worked as a tireless advocate for Brooklyn Park and all of North County, supporting local schools, churches, businesses, the local police, and the firefighters. He was a fixture at the county council, at the Maryland General Assembly, always fighting passionately for Brooklyn Park in North County. The entire Mills family was in attendance, and there wasn't a dry eye in the house. Here's what Keith Mills had to say to all the folks gathered for the big event. My father was one of many gentlemen who helped get this, make this complex happen. Ted Sophocles, Bill Samluck, uh, Norman Stumpf, and now to see what it has evolved in and all the men and women who are coaching and mentoring you guys, the boys and girls of Brooklyn Park and Pumphrey and Heritage Hill and Curtis Bay and all the neighborhoods around it is an incredibly satisfying journey. Play ball, Brooklyn Park. Good to see the Mills family getting that recognition, Kristen. Yeah, they deserve it. Keith has done a lot to give back to his community, too. And we should also mention 98 Rock, because I like to listen to that morning show sometimes, if it's not too crazy. <laughs> and Keith Mills always gives an excellent sports report. So very exciting stuff. And really yeah, they're is. very, again, like I said, very deserving. So 
Yay, play ball. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the other thing I love about right now. My, my O's are back. Yes, so. and they're having quite the start. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. I, I need them to stuff it up a little bit. But you're a Nats fan, though, right? Um, I'm neutral. Neutral, like, yeah. okay. Just yay, pro area. Yeah, Very yes. good. That's good. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Well, the county's Office of Emergency Management has been declared storm ready. Officials from the National Weather Service made the announcement this week after the county passed a battery of rigorous standards to earn the designation. Weather is the main reason for disasters nationally, regionally, in the state of Maryland and in the area. So it's important that uh, the county be well tied in with the National Weather Service office that issues the warnings for the weather events that we will invariably get, whether it's hurricanes, whether it's winter storms, tornadoes, flooding, all the different things that can befall the region. It's important that the warnings that the National Weather Service issue get to the localities, get to the county, so they can disseminate it through their uh, networks, through their citizenry, so that everybody can be ready for these dangerous weather events when they come. Because if everybody's ready, if everybody's warned, the result is gonna be so much better. And that's really what Storm Ready is all about, is making everybody uh, prepared for these, not just, uh, not just uh, dark and hazardous weather events, but the truly life and death dangerous weather events. And that's really the work that uh, Director Afton Chris and Cal from OEM have really brought about uh, over the past several months with the National Weather Service to uh, make sure that the county is ready. And that's multiple ways of receiving warnings from us, multiple ways to disseminate that warning out through the county, training, uh, including the Skywarn Weather Spotter program, and then planning for not just the weather disasters that come every few years, but the truly disastrous one in 100, one in 500 year events uh, that can come to make sure that we're planned for that as well. We really whiffed on storms this winter, Emily, and maybe we'll get some payback with spring showers. Although still, bring the weather down a yeah. little bit. Bring that temp down. I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. We're going to take a quick break, and when we return, we'll talk to Delegate Michael Malone. Take a look at our community calendar for events happening around town, and we'll be right back. Well, welcome back. Joining us in the studio today, we're delighted to have a Maryland delegate, Michael Malone, with us in the studio. Mr. Malone, how are you doing today? Doing great. Doing great. Happy that session's over. Oh, I bet you are very happy. And, and I want to give folks a brief, if they're not sure uh, what delegate you represent, tell us about your district. Uh, I'm the delegate for District 33, one of three. Um, district 33 covers Severna Park, Crofton, the Broadneck Peninsula, um, Severn, Millersville, um, so it's actually one of the largest uh, districts, both by size and by population. Oh yeah, <laughs> so any idea about the numbers? I think there's about 127,000 folks Goodness. in the district. Okay, yeah. all right. And are you excited about the elected school bill? Very much. School um, bill. I, I've been in, I, I went to public schools here in Anne Arundel County. I have- What's your high school? Shout out. Arundel Wildcats. Wildcats. 
Very good. <laughs> which I can't leave out Odenton, which is also in the district in Very, Gabriel's. Yeah, that's true. Tell us more about the bill. Um, the bill, there were some sort of competing bills, but the bill that finally passed provides for a fully elected school board. Um, there will be seven members who are elected from the seven councilmatic districts of Anne Arundel County, um, which I think is important. Um, a year ago, I argued against the current makeup um, as because one of the things that it could have had happened is you could have everyone from North County, everyone from South County, everyone from you know, Annapolis, and by being the members being elected from the councilmatic districts, you're gonna have geographic diversity, um, which I think is important because we obviously have, you know, our schools and our high schools and throw, for, from the whole county. Um, I think that's very important. And then there's gonna be an eighth member who will be the student member who will continue to be elected in the same process that has existed for, I think, about 20 years. That's such an exciting honor when you think about a student that will actually mm -hmm. be elected to be on the board. Um, tell us about some of the legislation that you were working on before it closed. Uh, I was pleased. I had um, three bills where I was the primary sponsor. Um, one bill which I thought was important was uh, a bill on crime currently home invasion if somebody would break into your home with the intent of committing basically mayhem um, and other terrible acts um, that wasn't listed as a crime of violence and why it's important for home invasion to be listed as a crime of violence is it means um, there's some you know potential enhanced sentences that can come about from a crime of violence and it also means once someone is sentenced from committing a crime of violence um, that they're not going to be entitled to as much good time. So you're not, it's going to make it less likely you hear that, you know, the story of a judge, you know, given a 20 year sentence and somebody's out in, let's say, five years, um, yeah. which I just thought was very important. It's I mean, very surprising it wasn't treated uh, with more. What happened is they separated, um, you know, basically B and E into two different types of breaking and entering. One would be sort of the cat burglar that just goes into a home to steal a TV, and the other one was the home of violence. Mm -hmm. And when they did that, they didn't put the home invasion, I said home of violence, but the home invasion, they didn't put it as a crime of violence. Hmm. And last year I was involved um, on a commission and it came up that it wasn't included and somebody said, hey, that needs to be fixed. Yeah. And <laughs> I, what I often do in a session is I'll drop down a note of something that should be addressed in the future and I drop down a note and remembered to have a bill drafted on it, so the bill was drafted and was fortunate that it passed both the House and the Senate. Great. And, and I also worked on two other bills. Um, one bill I worked, um, I co-sponsored with Senator Riley. Currently, um, if you die without a will, um, your spouse um, receives a certain percentage, a certain fixed number and then a certain percentage of the estate. Um, and the number is only 15,000, is the first hard number that is in place. And I think that was put in place like in 1994. Um, which Times have changed. Correct. <laughs> a little bit of inflation since then. Right. <laughs> and in fact, I even made a chart and talked about, you know, here was the price of milk, here's what the average cost of a house was. Um, the original bill proposed for it to go to 15, from 15,000 to 100,000 and then a percentage. Um, the Senate modified it and changed it from the 100 to a 40, but at least that's, you know, almost tripling the number, which actually sort of matches inflation. So I was pleased that that got done. And then the last bill, um, I was listed myself and Delegate Angel. Um, I do domestic law as my other job. Oh. And one thing that comes about sometimes when folks get divorced, sometimes a spouse wants to go back to a former name. Yeah. And when you have a divorce, um, you have to make that decision right then and there. And for some folks, that's a very tough decision. The, you know, I mean, they, it means that they might be switching their name that doesn't match with their kids. Mm -hmm. um, so what the bill as passed provides is it now gives the spouse 18 months from even after the divorce to make that decision. So if you have a child that's maybe close to graduating from high school, you'd like to keep the same name, you know, we wanted it to be a longer time period, but one thing I've learned is not everyone always agrees. Sometimes there's amendments. It's a delicate time. I, I agree. So. And, and plus, sometimes it's just a tough call for somebody. And this gives them the chance that even after the divorce, they have 18 months to think about it coming back. I had some other bills, um, a couple bills that I got through the House, but I didn't get through the Senate. Um, so I'll try again next yeah, year. Yeah, try again. That's all right. Well, the governor's uh, budget passed two weeks mm -hmm. early. Did you vote for it? I voted for his operating budget. Um, and I think it was a great budget. Uh, it had very modest increase, 1.5% increase over the previous budget. It set historic levels of funding for K through 12 education. 
um, which as I mentioned, you know, I'm a product of public schools. I have four kids who've gone through the Anne Arundel County Public Schools. So uh, no, no school is better than Anne Arundel County. That's correct. And, uh, and Maryland's had excellent schools throughout their history, or at least in, uh, in recent history, and the governor's keeping up with that. He also provided more than $50 million for the uh, Chesapeake Bay, and he also was able, within his budget, to enable college to stay reasonable here in Maryland, uh, capping increases for Maryland's colleges at 2%. That's all positive things for Marylanders. I think it, it was. All, all of those, so that's excellent. Um, what bills from this session do you think will have the most impact on your constituents? Um, well, certainly the school board bill. Yes, I, I a think lot that, will be happy. Uh, th that's going to be huge. Um, some other bills, which I think also are very important, is we continue to have our opioid crisis. And there's some bills to focus on drug courts um, and continue to have uh, ha help folks um, to make sure that they um, get through this so they don't harm themselves and, most importantly, harm others, um, harm their ch children and families. Um, often when I speak about the opioid epidemic, one of the things that I'll talk about is how it affects not just the person who's uh, addicted, but it affects, you know, children. It affects other family members. Just in the past year and a half, I had two cases where I represented relatively young men who almost overnight became single fathers um, because, you know, this, you know, the, somebody who was a homemaker unfortunately became addicted. And when you're addicted, you can't, you know, properly parent. And one was a young military man who had three kids, I think, all under the age of five. Um, and fortunately, he stepped up, but suddenly he had no choice because he had three young children, three young boys um, that he became a single father to because because the mom had become addicted um, and was no longer functional. So we Difficult we got to find watch. a way to end that. Yeah. It's you're very, very accurate with that. And it sounds like you hit a lot of major points that a lot of Marylanders are actually very concerned with right now. Chesapeake Bay, school, heroin. So we appreciate all the hard work on your past session. Thank you. Best of luck with your next one. Any fun weekend plans? Well, um, we usually do a few uh, egg hunts. We often go up to uh, Bunny Bonanzu up in, uh, up in the city at the Baltimore Zoo. Oh, that's fun. Maybe see, that, uh, see those new... Uh, uh, grizzly bears, yep. those cubs that have just come in and I th think I've just gotten gotten their names and I think there's a baby giraffe up there. Aww. And then we'll be getting together with some family for uh, you know Easter Sunday and yes. Easter service. What a great spring weekend. Yes. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Please come back. We love to have you for updates and happy Easter to you and your family. And to you. Thank I hope you, you so have a great much. weekend. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We'll be right back with more Week in Review right after this. Don't go anywhere. I realize that I'm not perfect but it all really started to change because you judge me for having a problem. No one is going to know that I need help. I need help. I know that no one is going to judge me for having a problem. I realize that I'm not perfect, but it all really started to change because you listen. Welcome back. The Seven River Lions Club has been helping out in the community for 60 years. Our own Pat Daly stopped by to find out what they're all about. Pat? Community service is at the forefront of today's society, especially here in Anne Arundel County with the Seven River Lions Club. I'm here with Lions, Joynette and Suzette, here to talk to you a little bit about the Seven River Lions Club. First of all, Joynette, tell me a little bit about your role. I know you're the president, but what exactly does that entail? It means that I show up for all the meetings, I'm there to lead the way and listen to all the questions that, and ideas that are brought to the table, whether it's at a member meeting or a board meeting, try to keep us on agenda and make sure that we're out there to serve our community the best way we can. Okay. So Zed, how about you? Well, I'm tail twister, which means I try to keep the fun into the club meetings from either walking around and asking questions about lionism and if people don't know we have a little kitty that they have to feed or I just lately been just saying the kitty's hungry feed her feed her <laughs> and all that money that we raise goes back into our community service so it's just another little way of getting a quarter from each member to help out. That's great now I know traditionally the Lions Club is for men how did how did you guys join as, as women? Um, it traditionally was an all-males club, 
um, and then you had the lionesses, which were separate. But then they found there was a lot of cross-functioning going on. We were interacting with each other. We were doing a lot of the same things. So they joined the two together. Now it's the lions that you see today. So it's no longer exclusively for men. It's men and women. Okay. What kind of projects do you, do you guys engage in, and how do you accomplish those projects? We have several projects going on. Um, we try to assess the community's needs. Mm -hmm. A lot of times the community will come to us and say, hey, we, we need help with this. Can you help? Right. Join out, we'll bring it to the club, and we'll say, yeah, we, we can do this. From either collecting food for like the span, yeah. right. um, collecting clothing or hats and gloves for the homeless. Or doing a ramp drive for ramp a local drive, elderly right? client who has mobility issues getting in and out of their home. And they, just need a ramp and they just need a ramp built. And they don't qualify for one through the county or any other means. And we go and we build it for them. Okay. It could okay. be also um, eyeglass assistance. Right. A lot, a lot of things the Alliance are known for are our eyes right. and yeah. hearing. Right. And we have a lot of folks who don't qualify for glasses through the county, but we have an agreement with a lot of the like lens crafters and other mm -hmm. eye folks to get them eyeglasses at a very low cost. And that's your primary focus, right? Yeah. One of your primary focuses? Yeah. Okay. Now, I know that um, you guys are pretty pretty big. You're looking to expand, right? What are, what are your efforts on that? Well, we're a group of about 60 members. But really, we have about 20 members that are active because we realize that there's a, a work-life balance. And many of our people are busy with family and teenagers. And so when they can participate, they do. So we're always on looking for new members, people to come and give new ideas and fresh ideas and help us with a lot of the fundraisers and events that we do. Okay, great. A lot of, I was going to say a lot of the new members might know what the needs are of the community, and they can be bringing them to us, yes. too. They might say, hey, this, they need help, well, and let's join. Right. Okay. I hear that you guys are famous for your fabulous fruit drive. Can you tell me more about that? Yes, we, are, we have our, our fabulous fruit drive up and coming. It's our fifth one of the season. Um, the, the, sale, the fruit will be available on April the 8th, and we'll have Valencia's and grapefruit available. Um, you have to have your orders in by March 31st, and we have a couple different ways for you to be able to uh, get access to us to put the orders in. You can go to our website or you can go actually go directly to the fruit sale website down in Florida where our fruit comes from gotcha. and order it there. Okay, great. Tell me about this million penny drive. Well, we, we were doing it as a supplement because as you, as you know, we do a lot of things in the community and the bill has to be paid for that. Um, and we also give out, you know, vouchers for eye exams, and we give glasses, and we have to buy all these things. So we're doing a million penny drive. We figure everybody has pennies or coin right. in their sofa, under a chair, in the garage, somewhere. Somebody's got a, a water jug they've been collecting. So we're looking for you to give that to us. And we have earmarked those funds that we put in for the, the million penny drive towards eyeglasses for hearing aids and for a lot of the things that we do in the community and the scholarships because one of the things we do here is we do scholarships. We give scholarships to um, graduating seniors in the area and one of the things that we do with our scholarships, we give those funds for the four years they're in college. We just don't give it the once and do the one and done and say, see ya. Gotcha. Uh, we give it to them to those four years. And a lot of those young people are very appreciative and they communicate with us via email, you know, thank you very much. This helped me do this or thank you very much. I got another scholarship. Let me give this back so then we can turn those funds over to the next needy student. Okay. All right. I just envisioned this <laughs> giant uh, bowl where everybody was swimming in a, about a million pennies. So I'm glad you clarified that. Yeah. Now, the most important thing, how, if, if, I, if I see uh, this interview, how do I join your group? Um, you can check us out at our website. You can come to any of our meetings. We have our regular general member meetings the first and third Tuesday of each month here at the American Legion off of Manhattan Beach Road in Savona Park at 7 p.m. And anyone can come and anyone can just observe and, and join and it will welcome you. Perfect. Well, thank you very much, ladies, lionesses. Um, we were certainly hearing your roar. So back to you guys. 
Thanks, Pat. Also, thanks to Miss Smallwood and all of the Lions for their work in the community. Outstanding. It really is. Yeah. It's fantastic. All this stuff really has me excited about being outside, springtime, doing good things. So, yeah, I was mentioning earlier about um, wanting to clean up around the house. Any exciting plans for Easter or for the weekend for you? Heading down to North Carolina. Nice. Out family. To the mountains. Yep. Broke my ankle last time I was there, so this time. <sighs> We're well, wrapping you in bubble yeah. wrap. <laughs> this time we are going to lay off some of the hiking and I'm not bringing the dogs. No, so. no. Yes, or about... maybe Easter cellophane would be more appropriate. <laughs> We're not letting you It'll get be hurt. fine, but I'm really excited <laughs> to get away for a couple days. How Yay. about you? Uh, granddad's house. I'm always wow. in charge of hiding the eggs, so that's always a big thing. Um, I'll be stuffing the eggs and then hiding the eggs. And we've got a plethora of little cousins that, love, that. love to How go many out. eggs? Oh my goodness, usually it's about 100, 120 eggs. It's a job. So it is a job, and there's lots of places. Um, they actually, my, my grandfather lives out in uh, Queen Anne County, and there's lots of room to, uh, to hide them. So we make it tricky, but still <laughs> easy for the little ones. And I always like to help the babies. Yes. I'm always like, oh, it's the sweetest. Oh, I love and that. And then the other cousins catch me, you're not supposed to do that. I'm like, she's this big. Can I help her, please? No, oh, and they love it. They yes. were toddling around their and big basket. Yes, and I love it. And it's so funny because, of course, they get excited about the candy, but we hide a couple dollar bills, and that yes. literally is money. I saw so. one of the funniest things on Twitter the other day. I don't remember what feed it was on or whatever, but it was this mom who was saying, I forgot to hide my Easter eggs. So I told the kids that the bunny hit them really well. Like, they've been out there for hours. <laughs> like, that's awful and so funny all at the same time. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I like when we've been to my um, grandfather's later on and like even as late as uh, Thanksgiving and we'll find an Easter egg. <laughs> Whoops. Guess we should have marked all the places down, but no, we're not going to do that. Well, okay. very happy Easter and safe travels you. to Thank you, you and yours. Thank you. And enjoy. Thank enjoy you so the, much. the festivities. And happy Easter to all you out there. Yes, thank you. Yeah. Happy Easter. <laughs> well, that wraps up this week's edition of Week in Review. You can watch this episode and archived episodes online anytime on Facebook or YouTube by searching Arundel TV. Please tune in again next week for more highlights and news from around the county. We'll see you next time. <laughs>